Hey guys, it's Matt. The book is finally done. It is not titled right now. There is a working title, and I'll share that with you in just a moment. The first book that I read on YouTube, A Reality Few Can See, I guess I started it in 2018, it was 90 plus percent conspiracy and 10% conclusions. This is just the opposite. It's actually far less than 10% conspiracy and 90% plus final conclusions, in my opinion, with your help, the help of your emails and your comments as to how this reality works. One of the main conclusions in this book, among many, it came from all the work put into the original book, where once it passed 700 and some pages, and you review it so many times and all the conspiracy we've looked at since, and I started writing that before C, the me, we're at a point, and it's obvious at this point, you step back and say, no real world could do this. No world <laughs> formed the way science says. It came from the cosmos and the Big Bang. That is impossible. And it's not just conspiracy embedded in everything. It's multi-level conspiracy embedded in everything. I mean, science still holds on to this explanation as to how the world was formed and what this universe is. And it's an absolute joke at this point. They should be ashamed of themselves, and their mother should disown them. As I start reading the chapters, the main comments that I'll be looking for when I read chapters on YouTube, there's certain chapters that will not be able to be read here, I assure you, and that will have to be at freevoice.io. But I will look to the comments first that push back on me, that say, this is wrong, Matt, that object, that say, well, this is pretty good, Matt, but you're really missing out over here. This is turning into horse shit. That's what I want. This needs to stand up to every smart person here. I want the trolls. Let's see if they push back on what I'm presenting instead of pushing back on me personally. You won't hear a peep from the trolls with that type of counter argument. So I will look to that and I welcome it. I really do. Just, you know, try to keep it cordial. A quick note to Christians and the followers of other religions. You know I'm not a Christian. I have no religious uh, affiliation whatsoever. It would be disingenuous of me, whatever that means, to hold back certain things because 20 or even 30 to 35 percent of people here, depending on when people come and go, consider themselves a Christian. This is the book, in my opinion, of how reality works. Now, what I present, just a few sections, it's not blasphemous, you won't find it offensive, but I'll say things like a massive religion with a gigantic billion-dollar infrastructure, throw it in the trash. Then I'll talk about why do you need that to have a personal relationship with what you consider to be God? Why do you need the infrastructure? Things like that. It's not that bad, I don't think, from your perspective. I still think 90% of the foxhole and our, in seeing our adversary and what our adversary is out to do with us, we have in common. Just a quick note, I don't think it'll piss you off, but I certainly can't hold it back, knowing that a certain subscriber base is Christian. Regarding the title of the book, I have two possible titles at this time. I'm not going to share them. I'll tell you the working title in just a moment. I just want to see how this goes. I want to see if you guys say, Matt, this is a nice, precise presentation of how this crazy uh, bozo show reality works, or Matt, this is, you know, forget the title, this is a horse shit. I want to see how it goes. So if I put the title out now, some troll immediately will go out and steal the URL, just go to Network Solutions or GoDaddy and take it. I'm not going to do that. If they want to take this URL, the working title, the trolls can steal this. The working title, what would go with today, is reality, I might got answer. Reality as a subtitle too. Title is reality, I might got answer. Subtitle, you decide if I got answer. Now, if the trolls want to steal that and pay for two years of network solutions or a GoDaddy and secure that URL, you can go right ahead. So with that being said, and those provisos out of the way, as Voldemort said in the Deathly Hallows series of movies, begin. <laughs> I would read the title now, but it doesn't exist. Underneath the title is a quote. The people considered the most intelligent, as measured by their degrees and titles, know the least about how reality works. This book is written for real souls who sense there is something wrong with the world. If this century seems like the twilight zone to you compared to the last, 
Congratulations, you're one of us. The concepts presented here are easy to understand. Unlike most authors who extol the use of big words like extol, this book is easy to read or follow along if Matt's reading it. A special thanks to Tony, Greg, and to a thousand others who sent me an email which helped move our understanding of reality forward. We've gotten further than we ever thought we could. Reality is rarely examined using the lens of common sense. On Earth, the highest truths are intentionally camouflaged inside society's complicated mess. Once you cut through the noise and unplug the fog machine of modern life, what is going on here is absurdly simple. This reality loves intellectual genius. The bogus insights of academia and philosophers add to people's confusion. I have found what I consider to be the highest truths by simply looking for answers in places that are not approved by the so-called experts of society. What follows will remind you of what you already know, but were meant to forget. First, some advice. Take the verbose and bombastic full ossifers like Nietzsche, Schopenhauer, Kant, etc., etc., rolling around, rolling around. Throw them all out. Their works act to feed the confusion. Intelligence has no correlation with understanding how this reality works. Mathematical genius is the biggest culprit in building a false foundation for truth. I assure you that your spiritual self has no affinity to a calculus equation. Take science as complicated formulas and ridiculous theories like the Big Bang and throw them in the trash can. Then put Charles Darwin in a dunk tank. Follow that by tossing every massive religion in the world out the door. These are constructs of man held in layaway for you by kings and queens. Have a relationship with your God if you so choose, but do you really need a billion-dollar infrastructure to do that? A man in white robes carrying incense isn't closer to God than you are. Atheism is such cerebral sloth that it and its mindless alkalites don't even deserve a single page in this book. Let's start with a simple summary explaining life on Earth. You live in a reality that is far less real than it seems. For example, scientific explanations regarding the formation of the universe and where life came from are ridiculous. This is a reality that somehow generates false conclusions using what seems like scientific fact. Your senses and parts of the brain essentially work for this world in order to convince the real you that Earth itself is real, a solid place. It is not. This is a world designed so spiritual beings can have a physical experience. And for that to happen, this place needs to be fully believed in. From the place where we originally came from before birth, material worlds are probably not very common. From your perspective, there are three parts to this reality. First, there is spiritual you, the part that existed before birth and will go on after death. Second, There's the natural world, which is the reality game board that hosts your body. Finally, there's something here that organizes a massive trick. It's like a game show host, but even sleazier. You and other real people are the targets of its trick. There are three types of people living in bodies on Earth. There are those who fall for the trick. That's most of your family and friends. There are those who see through the trick. People like you and people like you and me. And there are those that assist the trick and help propagate the ruse on reality, people like Melvin P. A successful life experience begins by seeing through the deception and understanding why our adversary on Earth plays its trick. Then, once the mental fog and brainwashing has been overcome, our goal is to use this life for what it was meant for. That means spending the rest of your life doing the self-work that benefits the whole of you mind, body, and spirit, which is very different from what this reality wants you to do. Observe your family and friends. The trickster here tries to hinder your achievements, like someone who waves a giant flag back and forth behind the backboard during a foul shot of an NBA game and blows horns and makes sounds. The trickster's always getting in your way. And look around. It's been quite effective. If it wasn't such an asshole, I'd congratulate it on the enormity of its success. Okay, Mr. Author, whoever the heck you are, you son of a beach, let's assume for a second that what you're writing about here is actually true, and you're not just an escapee from the local asylum. Why would there be something here on Earth that's trying to trick us? Well, that's a good question. 
because the asshole element here on earth that is trying to screw us over isn't understood or seen by most people. This earth is a place for souls to have an experience that they can't likely have anywhere else or where they originally came from. It's a place to be something and someone that you've never been before and probably can't be elsewhere. Having an adversary, an opposing team, if you will, is necessary here. Name one sports team that takes the field and plays with itself. Don't laugh. (laughs) Christians call the bad guy here Satan, but I don't call it that. Living a lifetime has to be a tough ordeal in order to grow from the experience. You've probably heard this saying before, that which does not kill us makes us stronger. You see, that's a stuffed Lenin. I'll explain that term later. Actually, in this reality, that's better stated as that which will eventually kill us makes us spiritually stronger. That then can be reduced to experiencing mortality and what seems like the end of us makes our whole self stronger. Life on earth was designed to be tough. Have you ever gone to an escape room that are in these shopping centers all over the place anymore? When you got there, did they just hand you a set of instructions on what to do to get out? What fun would that be? What challenge would that be? What if in the escape room, as you turned right, as some nerd's voice came over a loudspeaker in the ceiling and shouted down at you, hey, asshole, you stop and look around stunned. Yeah, you asshole. I I gave you the damn instructions when you got here and you're going left when you should go right by the bookcase. Now, is there something mentally wrong with you or I'd have to come in there and help you out? That type of experience at the mall would be no fun. We need the challenge. This world needs game players, people like you and me, and this world needs an army of tricksters, Bill and Hillary Clinton types, to play against you. One side hides the truth, while the other side looks to rediscover it. Most people on Earth can't see the nature of this game. They can't see one darn bit of it. They don't see none of it. Your friends and family are like Little Red Riding Hood who keep rubbing Granny's hairy feet with long nails, not realizing it's a wolf. One quick note before really jumping in and getting started. So this was like a preface, but you never announce a preface because everybody skips the damn thing if you announce it. Hey, authors, if you ever write a preface, don't call it preface. They go, I'm going to skip that horse shit. Everybody skips it. So this was like a preface, but here's the point. Many people have approached me many, many times over the years saying, Matt, a certain principle in a video, that sounds like a close match to this or that. Or that seems like Gnostic, or you're getting that from... I'm not getting it from anywhere, I assure you. I can barely read, and I barely read. People will cite to me, like, the exact text that's similar to what I'm saying in a video. Like, what did Matt Damon say in the Bahavid Ba? He said, you you got that from Vickers. I didn't steal anything from Vickers. It's all from my observation of how this asshole element here called... Well, we'll name it later. It's not appropriate this early in the book. I assure you, if anything I say happens to be close to whatever, it's completely unintentional. I haven't read a single word of Gnostic text. I haven't read a a single page of what could be considered an occult work, like the books from the Theosophical Society. I can't pronounce it, and whatever the heck that is. I don't read that stuff. I simply observe reality and let an inner tuning fork guide me to a common sense answer. So I guess this is the official start. To the people that have been with me over many years, we've come a long way. Think of the crap we used to chase years ago. To anybody new, I have great news. Only a real person would desire to read or listen to this book. As a real person, you're the most powerful being in this particular universe. However, we are not in this snow globe alone. Something here desires what you possess, like that thing in Carol Ann's closet. It needs something from you in order to survive. Your adversary wants the incredible energy you radiate. Most people don't know much about themselves, but this thing knows you. It studied you for as long as you've been alive. It knew your ancestors before you. Unfortunately, it's not very friendly. It will take your energy for as long as you give it away freely. It will convince you that it is the boss here, and that you're just an insignificant side effect of an explosion that came from deep space. This trickster is a formidable adversary. Today, most people on Earth serve this thing willingly. You can believe that. They do what it says. Stay safe. Oh, thank you. You stay safe, too. Most people believe in its systems, its governments, science, and history. Your friends and family gladly feed this beast every day of their lives. 
your adversary does not eat food. It has no body. It lives off the energy of real people, and it draws forth emotions so the energy can be converted to its sustenance. This book will assist you in understanding what the trick is, how it's played, and what it means to overcome it. A win here is both simple and difficult at the same time. It doesn't seem so, but simple can be extremely difficult. Only a certain type of person would be interested in this book. So if you're interested in what's being presented so far and what follows, it's the greatest news of all time. Think of the other possibilities of people that are here. If NPC types or organic portal types exist and we don't know, would they be interested in this? They'd read a page or two. This is horse shit. They'd pick a Batman or some other comic book. A minion that serves it? A top-level minion? Would they be interested in this? No, they're, they, who knows what type of spiritual creep they are? They would not resonate with this. So if this interests you, it's the greatest news of all time. But we're all in the same kind of situation together, and it's very difficult right now. If you feel like the world around you has gone mad, then know that you're one of the few sane people left. If modern culture and society doesn't make sense to you anymore, then jump for joy. You don't want to be compatible with what it has become. Its madness no longer makes sense to any real being who has rejected its download. If you feel like an outcast, that's the best news of all time. You don't want to cozy up to the lifestyles presented on Housewives of Atlanta. Neither do I. I'm not joking. If you've lost relationships with your family and friends as you walked away from the illusion of this world, then know that is what happens to real people who choose the road less traveled. If you feel that the excitement of life has been sucked out of the modern world and its fruit tastes rotten to you, then know that what you're going through is a natural process. Your current emotional state and general confusion is necessary to grow. Your reaction to society and culture is organic and exactly what should be happening to real souls at this moment in time. People like us are no longer interested in life's trivial pursuits and petty rewards. If you're feeling a bit down these days, that's what happens before the fog clears and life delivers the most meaning. If you're hopelessly nostalgic, you place bugs outside to save them, you cry at the drop of a hat with an absurd level of sentimentality, then you should be congratulated. You are the highest spiritual incarnation in this entire place. These are symptoms that say you are very close to winning. We are not like most others here in this place. The journey is harder for us than most. I believe reality was designed this way. It was meant to be a spiritual ass-kicking for people who are getting ready to graduate. Like a truck and tractor pull, it somehow gets harder the closer one gets to winning. Consider this. Who struggles more, you or the dummies in your life who watch the news all day long? They're not close to winning, so the madness of the world makes sense to them. The fact that you can perceive what 99% of others in the world cannot is the burden that we are forced to carry. If everybody saw what you and I did, there'd be nothing special about our perception. Walk through a big city and just look around you, or put the news on all day long, or flip through the channels. I don't want to be compatible with that, do you? No way, man! That would not be out of sight at all. So, the ship of fools of this world has sailed away, and you're no longer on it. If you don't fit in anymore, it means you've dived off the back of society's love boat. Earth in 2023 is not the friendly Pacific princess that we saw on TV in the 70s with a smiling Vicky, Isaac, and Captain Steubing. This boat is of the carnivore cruise line, not carnival, carnivore, and it eats souls. Jumping off the back of the boat is the start of an incredible journey. Get wet. We're simply doing what we're meant to do. I believe we struggle now because we are meant to struggle now. It's all by design. Life gets hard the moment you reject this matrix. We have human instincts, and we want to be accepted and loved. It's depressing at first, seeing that your choices are not compatible with the society around you. We lose most of our friends, and our family becomes distant, yet polite. Like at family gatherings, my family gatherings. Like, Oh, Matt, are, are you still doing the insurance? I'm not going to tell them. No, no, I investigate conspiracy full time. Oh, yeah, yeah, still doing it. The, and then I walk away like, oh, that's that conspiracy son of a bitch. Oh, I wonder where he went wrong. I don't care what they say anymore behind my back. It is a very heavy cross we, quote, carry, and we carry it alone. 
my choices are insane to them, and that makes perfect sense to me, because per society's standards and metrics of what is considered normal, they are right and I am wrong. What is defined as normal and the path comes from the middle of the ship of fools, of which they're a very happy passenger. I walk away from four people I'm talking to at the family reunion, like, that Matt, where did he go wrong? I heard he was doing very well in San Francisco. I heard he just quit that job. Now I hear he just walks around his house and takes care of cats and one pisses all over the floor. Why did he give up that job in San Francisco? Maybe he's going crazy. Who cares what they say? They'll never see things the way we do. And one point of view is more just than the other, I assure you. We are right. They are associating with Housewives of Atlanta. That's not more just. It could never be. I'm not joking. How many of us are struggling right now? It's still great news. We can learn to turn this feeling of rejection into the fascination, a totally different interpretation. It's the fascination of watching the most incredible transformation process in the universe, and it's happening to me and you. Watch as the ship of fools sails away with all your friends and family on it. Watch it get smaller and go out of sight. For people like us, it's gone forever and good riddance. So I hope this book can provide some answers about how things work on Earth, generate some laughs, and help confirm that you've made the right decision in disconnecting from the illusion. If you've dived off the back of the cruise ship called Western Society and Culture, you should be congratulated. It's possible that not even one half of one half of one half of one percent who have ever lived have been able to fully separate from this thing here, this thing that we'll explore in the pages to come. What is happening to us now and to society as a whole is just as it should be. If the world appears to be, quote, hijacked by dark forces, that is the wrong interpretation in my opinion. We're simply in an act of a play where it's supposed to seem like dark forces that we can never fully escape are everywhere. So in a way, yeah, the the players are there, the minions are there, but they're playing a role in this act of the play. When people walk through the old Brigantine Castle in 1985, Brigantine, New Jersey, a haunted house, when they walk through it, they knew it was, quote, a ride, and the Dracula was just a man in makeup. We in this life don't have that luxury of walking through this brigantine castle. To me, things are exactly as they should be to facilitate our wake up. That line is the key to the whole thing. To facilitate our wake up, like Wayne's drawing. All of this, this little figure looks around at millions and millions and billions of moving parts. All of this for me, yes, the entire reality and as dark as it seems, to facilitate the wake-up, at least of some. The creepy people here in this world are role players. Learning only comes from getting a good ass-kicking. A world, an entire world of rise on Star Trek. Nothing but beautiful beaches. Nothing but sex acts. What would that do for us? That'd be fun for about two days. That wouldn't do shit for the growth of your spiritual whole. Where's the lube? Pass the lube. That's great for two days. A spiritual ass-kicking is what the whole of you needs. That's what we're getting now. As the author of this, I realize that saying, quote, things here as they should be, end quote, will elicit the throwing of tomatoes from many in our community who are addicted to the fear videos. They're addicted to watching the videos and the bit shoot and the brighty and the odyssey. The satanic secret societies are pulling the strings on everything. A blood sacrifice. The, all that shit and all those fear videos gives these people a hard on. Saying what is happening to us is, quote, by design, pisses them off. Because if you see that or realize that, guess what? It takes the fear out of it, and they're addicted to that. They'll toss around terms to label me. Oh, what Matt is presenting is new age, new age, new age, new age, whatever that means, to make themselves feel superior. These dummies in a certain sector of our community are like parrots. They've been given the label of new age to wield when they don't like a certain philosophy. Just like the world was given the term grassy knoll, had to attach to propagate the story through time. The truth community was given the term Hegelian dialectic with crushed ice. We were given the term predictive programming. We just all just came up naturally and all of a sudden we all started using the same terms. Like, well, where did these terms come from? Oh, oh yeah, our, our adversary put him in there. The truth research community, at least a segment, it's a breed of parrots, 
And every time they squawk, Polly won a cracker. It came directly from the controlling element here that we'll name later in this book. I don't give a shit what tag you put on what I'm saying here. There is no precise definition for new age. Do you know this definite new age may have the broadest definition to be all things to all people of any two words ever put next to each other? Sure, I admit my positions when it comes to that spiritual part of the book we talk about, it's not associated with any major religion. I already admitted that. If they wanted to call me new age, that would be the only thing that makes sense. Hang me on that if you want to. To me, what is going on in reality is rather simple, and it can be demonstrated to anybody with an open mind. But these dummies, I mean, just look how stupid the parroting is. Like, hey, new age, new age, oh, I got you because I called you new age. Oh, my God. To me, the labels don't matter. I think all labels are a camp. I think that's what this dark reality wants us in camps. Our process, the process that all real people go through, is the same. The steps are the same for almost all of us. In this regard, we are brothers in truth. We are the same in this regard. And it's unfortunate we have to classify ourselves in different groups and camps. We all do this. At some point in our lives, a tiny percentage of people here will just start to see that something isn't quite right with this place. For some of you, it was five years ago. For people like my friend Greg, it was on the day back in 2001, the very day of. He's trying to tell people, that can't happen. I mean, it took me about eight years longer than that. We all have a different date, but the process is similar. The steps are similar. Society and culture begins to look alien per the definition of the word, not little green men. Almost nothing lines up with common sense anymore. Real people begin to notice things and say, well, wait a second, uh, isn't that the 20,000th walk in a row that's been organized for some cure? Where's the cure? 20,000 walks, and I've done 15,000 of the 20,000. I got 10 drawers full of these stupid walk t-shirts with all the corporate logos all over the back. How many times have all these groups used the slogan, a race for the cure? Or a bike for the cure. It's the same horse shit. How many races can people put up with where there's no damn results? Is there any t-shirt anywhere in the world that says, because of all my walking, we cured this son of a bitch? That doesn't exist. Well, there's something wrong there. Wait a second. This is my seventh presidential election cycle. And as the political parties hand the baton of power back and forth to each other, not just president to president, but, oh, Speaker of the House. Oh, now it's Republican. It was Nancy Pelosi. They hand that Speaker of the House baton back and forth. But wait, nothing ever changes. Debt goes up inverse to freedom. So why do I keep getting excited to vote for the next stooge? And wait, wait a second. It, they say if I evolve from monkeys then why did the monkey's own evolution just completely stop cold? If I evolve from monkeys, shouldn't monkeys at this point be at least riding horses or something? As real people start to see through the world and all the veils start to come down, they keep asking these kinds of questions. The list of strange things that they notice gets longer and longer and longer, but their friends don't see one bit of it. They don't see none of it. Society has no answers for our inquiries other than screaming, conspiracy theorist, back in our faces. Nothing is adequately addressed by the figures deemed to be in authority. They run the same scripts, which revolve around belittling those asking tough questions. When we begin to separate or great divorce this reality itself, it then starts to show its true colors, and it shows them very quickly to those who had it, that have announced that it's no longer part of this matrix. Oh, then the Agent Smiths will be all over your ass. Soon the entire world around us starts to break down into a clown show. The moment we see through it, we point and scream, and we stand up and we yell at the top of our lungs, Bozo Show, asking our friends and family to see what we see. We ask our friends, can't you understand how fake that is? Look at that. For some reason, they can't see it. We have now come to realize that the entire scope of society and culture is based on a gigantic trick. It wants something from us. For your family and friends still in the ship of fools, what we now see as a vaudeville act appears perfectly normal to them. Something here is out to steal our spiritual energy. As a real being, you resonate certain frequencies out into the ether. 
Some vibrations, like love, are sour milk to our adversary. Others, like fear and hate, are its sweet ambrosia. To create the negative energy it feeds upon, dark reality must play a trick on people. To us in 2023, the nature of the trick has become obvious. To the people on the street, the stress and complexity of the world is simply the best a modern society can do. And it's all normal, Matt. You're not one of those people, are you? They see its entire presentation as organic when none of it is natural. They make excuses for it and seem to run scripts to defend it. They don't understand that the complexity of the world is manufactured on purpose to hide our understanding. The bizarre oddities of life begin to be noticed by real people like you and me. While this false reality is masterful at fooling the average Joe to live his life a certain way, we begin to see its true nature and to reject its instruction manual. We now see what this dark thing that lays over reality is out to do to us and why it plays its trick. So let us now approach the average man on the street and ask him a few questions to gauge his spiritual aptitude. Here comes a man toward us now. We do the thing like Sea Biscuit, the clippity clop, the clippity clop, the clippity. I don't have an assistant here like he had in Sea Biscuit. Here comes the man now. He's well dressed, carrying a briefcase. He seems to be eating something that he's carrying in his left hand. He's taking some sort of egg McMuffin or something. Sir, sir, uh, do you have a moment, sir? Can I ask you a question? No, I'm not selling anything. Perplexed and relieved you aren't a solicitor, he stops and says, Okay, ask away. Okay, thank you, sir. Look around you, sir. Spin spin around. Look all around you. What is this reality that you and I are living in? How would you define it? How would you put it into words? Put your briefcase and your egg McMuffin down for a second and really think about what I just asked you, sir. After drooling a bit and wiping the egg from his face, the man on the street would give you a scientific answer that he learned in school, which he believes is an appropriate response to your question. He says, uh, uh, th- th- this is Earth. Uh, this is Earth, and we're, we're inside our solar system, which resides inside a certain part of the Milky Way galaxy, which is one galaxy among many galaxies in our universe. They say there's billions. Okay, sir, you obviously have watched a lot of BBC and PBS, but regarding what you just said in response to what I asked you, you didn't tell me a goddamn thing. He's drooling even more now. Sir, what does assigning names like Milky Way, giving it a name, what does that tell us about the nature of reality? Does labeling years with a number like 2023 tell us anything about time? The actual year that we're in is unknown. What do scientific names, tags, and designations from NASA tell you about who you really are? Are you proud to be called Homo sapiens, sir? Trust me, that terminology ain't flattering. Does the scientific explanation about what you're doing here in this place called Earth satisfy you? Sir, put that damn egg sandwich down for a second and look around you. Like I said, use a different perspective for once in your life, man. Look, if you're an atheist, I can understand why you just stand there with your mouth agape. If you're an atheist, then my question about who you really are makes no sense to you. Do you believe everything you see around you, if you're an atheist, came about by accident? and there was some accident that derived from space that caused an explosion? I said, what is this reality? Not where is it, man? What is your place in it? Not what's it called? Damn it, man, haven't you ever thought about the meaning of life? The man's face takes on a blank look, and he searches up amongst the clouds for answers to questions he's never been asked before. Even this dummy senses that generic descriptors like Earth, Orion Arm, Homo sapien, sapien, 2023, things like that tell us nothing useful about where we are, where we came from, and most importantly, who we really are. In terms of delivering spiritual meaning, even he senses that science is as impotent as Kim Jong-un after eating four gallons of ice cream. This man on the street that we're interviewing seems like he wants to run away from me, so I quickly hit him with another round of questions. Sir, Have you ever thought about what you're supposed to accomplish over the course of your life? Have you written down your spiritual goals, or is your bucket list composed only of materialism and carnal pleasures like most people's, where it says, number 10, experience a menage a trois before age 40? Do you have a soul, sir? 
Is the whole of you spiritually trapped inside your flabby body? No offense. Is part of you potentially, a spiritual part of you potentially somewhere else? Did you choose your religion or was it given to you by your parents? How did you get to earth? And please don't tell me about the sex act. I've seen nature shows, sir. I'm talking about what you were before you were born. You never even thought about that, did you? You big dummy. How did the real you get here, and where did you come from? Stand up straight while I'm talking to you, and for crying out loud, tuck up those pajamas. When presented with deep questions like this, most people on the street will say one of three things. One, they're here on earth to serve their God, whichever one their parents worshipped before them. Think about it. Are there a lot of Muslim children living inside large Catholic families in Southie Boston? Two, Many people in the street will serve up the scientific, atheist position of the Big Bang, with dust to dust, in quotes, tattooed on their shoulder. Or three, most people in the street don't have a damn clue, and have never considered life's biggest questions. The man we were interviewing trying to snarf down the egg sandwich is in this third category. He says back to me, Dude, thinking about that sort of stuff doesn't pay my bills, now does it? What are you? Some sort of unemployed hippie who left the commune? I'm glad you have the time to ponder such nonsense, but guess what? Some of us work. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm late for a conference call, you hippie son of a beach. The man turns and walks briskly away from me up the sidewalk. I thank him loudly for his time, but he doesn't look back. After thousands of years, shouldn't humanity be able to do better at answering these big questions than that man with his egg MacGuffin? It seems modern man has no sense of what he really is and what he's doing here. Most people will go to their grave, never spending an hour pondering the nature of reality and their place in it. Quote, ancient man and indigenous people, like the American Indians, for example, did consider these questions, and they conducted ceremonies to connect with their spiritual roots. Tribal people communing with their ancestors is a way of rediscovering the spiritual bridge that extends outside of this place for real people. The man with the egg sandwich thinks tribal people are primitive bastards. Modern man is spiritually lost. He doesn't understand indigenous or tribal cultures, so all he can do is mock them. He sits in his pews each week and goes through the motions, but the experience provides little meaning for most. He's as confused as a porn star who accidentally walked into a pickle grower's convention. Every once in a while, a real person will get frustrated with society's explanations and go searching in other places for answers. What they find out after a few years of digging is disturbing to them. They learn that almost everything they've been told by a respected authority is wrong. The first time this happens, one thinks that it must be an anomaly. This just can't be right. So they keep researching and comparing Wikipedia to common sense and alternative sources of information. Then they find that the second topic they've dived into for a few weeks yields the same results. What authority is saying is just bogus bullshit. The so-called experts are wrong again. They soon see that what is really going on here is far different than what their high school textbook said. For example, why the Civil War was fought is one example among thousands. They soon find that what is being presented on the world news and in history books usually turns out to be a bunch of bullcrap. Then they try to talk to people about the fascinating things they're discovering, but nobody around them is interested in listening, not even their spouse is interested. As they keep pushing these new facts onto their family and friends, they see that it starts to push people away. It seems no one is as open-minded as they said they were. The person who can now see grows concerned. This is like a mini stage of grief before it grows into what's called the next stage for the truth researcher, the Great Depression. The truth researcher who is new to this asks, how could this be? Why doesn't CNN and the BBC expose how fake politics is? Why can't my friends see that a guy holding a plastic dish over his head on the moon can't talk back to the president? Why am I shunned when I try to show people that a hollow aluminum aircraft wing can't slice through 10,000 pounds of solid steel? Why are the loved ones of shooting victims being interviewed on the news always smiling? Why aren't my friends and family interested in what I want to show them? Oh, shit. Maybe I'm the crazy one. 
their research continues and produces even greater levels of frustration in a real person. Wait a second. The amount of deception I've uncovered requires a level of organization that seems impossible for, quote, regular men and women to pull off. The people around me are starting to act weird, like I'm trapped inside the movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers or something. My best friend seems to run scripts and defends the madness presented by government in a strange way that doesn't make sense to me anymore. My friends either can't see or don't want to see what I want to show them. Maybe this mind control shit is real. Why am I immune, though? Something here has organized some sort of trick on us. Its capabilities appear to be supernatural. It seems like all the lies that create confusion seems to be on purpose? Yes, it's a trick. Yes, it's on purpose. Christians call it Satan. I call it something else. Thanks, guys. Look forward to delivering Chapter 2 very soon.